Himalayas are the true sentinels and also the cradle of the Indian subcontinent. Created by the collision of the Indian tectonic plate with the Eurasian plate, the Himalayan range runs west, northwest to east, southeast in an arc 2400 kilometers long. Its western anchor, Nanga Parbat, lies just south of the northernmost bend of Indus River, whereas the eastern anchor, Namcha Barwa, just west of the great bend of Sangpo River. The range varies in width from 400 kilometers in the west to 150 kilometers in the east. The Himalayan ranges run across five countries, Bhutan, India, Nepal, China and Pakistan, with the first three countries having sovereignty over most of the range, the Himalayas are bordered on the northwest by the Karakoram and the Hindu Kush ranges, on the north by the Tibetan Plateau and on the south by the Indo-Gangetic Brahmaputra all rise near Mount Kailash to cross and encircle the Himalayas. The Himalayas are amongst the youngest mountain ranges of the planet and consist mostly of uplifted sedimentary and metamorphic rocks. The Arakan Yoma Highlands, formed as a result of this collision, runs across Myanmar and Andaman and Nicobar Islands in the Bay of Bengal. About 50 million years ago, this fast moving Indo Australian plate had completely closed the Tethys Ocean, the existence of which has been determined by sedimentary rocks settled on the ocean floor and the volcanoes that fringed the edges. Today, the Indo-Australian plate continues to be driven horizontally below the Tibetan plateau, which forces the plateau to continue to move upwards. I have referred to the Himalayas as the sentinel because it protects the Indian subcontinent from the harsh winters and severe cold winds and conditions that emanate from the Russian Arctic regions. Similarly, I have also termed it as a cradle because the Himalayan range encompasses about 15,000 glaciers which store huge quantities of fresh water. Its glaciers include the Gangotri and Yamunotri in Uttarakhand, giving rise to mighty Ganga and Yamuna rivers, and the Khambu glacier in the Mount Everest region, giving rise to the Sangpo Brahmaputra river. The Zemu in Sikkim gives rise to the Tista river. The combined drainage basin is home to some 600 million people. Being perennial rivers and the annual cycle of flooding of the plains that brings in fresh and fertile alluvial soil to the plains, thus restoring its fertility makes it a true natural cradle for the Indian subcontinent continent, as it nourishes and sustains it. Thus, the Himalayan ranges are revered by all the religious sects that have their root in the Indian subcontinent. In Hinduism, the Himalaya has been personified as the god Himvat, the god of snow, who is mentioned in the Mahabharata. He is the father of Ganga and Saraswati, who become rivers, and Parvati, who married Shiva. Several places in the Himalaya are of religious significance in Hinduism, Jainism, Sikhism, and Buddhism. However, Amongst all the other religious sects, the Buddhism outnumber every other religious group in number and have widespread acceptance and followers in the Himalayan kingdoms. A number of Tibetan Buddhist sites are situated all across the Himalayas and there were over 6,000 monasteries in Tibet. The present documentary encompasses all ancient and reverend Buddhist monasteries of the Indian Himalayas starting from the land of Donlit Mountains that is Arunachal Pradesh and covering Sikkim, Himachal Pradesh up to Ladakh. This documentary encompasses my journey through the Indian Himalayas through five years starting from 2008 with a visit to Sikkim and culminating in Ladakh visit in 2013. Let me bring my journey to the famed Tawang Monastery of Arunachal Pradesh. Tawang Nestled in the lap of the Himalayas at 
11,500 feet above the sea level lies the famous Tawang Monastery, also called the Land of the Mon Pass. A colorful canvas against a backdrop of the nature, it fills one mind, one's mind with spiritual bliss. Apart from the Tawang Monastery, the other important places that one can visit in Tawang are the War Memorial and the Craft Centers, which lie within the precincts of the township. Tawang Monastery The legendary 17th century Tawang Monastery First atop a hill juxtaposed against the clear blue sky, its the first sight itself is an eternal bliss. The Tawang or Ganden Namgya Latse is the second largest monastery in Asia, next only to the one at Lhasa in Tibet. It is located atop a hillock at a height of about 10,000 feet overlooking the Tawang Valley and resembles a fortress. With a history of over 400 years, having been founded by the Lama Lodore Gyamso in 1681, the monastery is the largest of its kind in the country and controls 17 gompas in the region. It is the fountainhead of spiritual life for the followers of the Galuga sept and the Mahayana school of Buddhism. It is the fountainhead of the spiritual life of the Monpas and the Shek Dupas. This Tawang Monastery, apart from housing almost 800 lamas with the living quarters and huge kitchen to feed them, also encompasses within its precincts the main prayer hall called the Dukhang, which houses the huge 28 feet high gilded statue of Lord Buddha. The monastery follows a strict hierarchy and from the lowest order it ascends to the highest in the following manner. Lama, Gezi, Gelong, and finally, the highest in the order that is Rinpoche. Tawang is also associated with the famous Torgya festival, which is held in the 11th Monpa month called the Darwa Chulchipko, that is December to January as per the Georgian calendar. The festival brings out the Monpas from far and wide in all their colorful finery. The festival provides ample opportunities to the Gompas to sell an array of their wares. Sikkim. Rumtek Monastery, resplendent in the vibrant colors of the sacred art that adorns it, the monastery of Rumtek Dharma Chakra Center, the largest in Sikkim, is perched in an altitude of about 5,500 feet above sea level. It is set into a hill facing the city of Gantok, 24 kilometers away from it. The temple is surrounded by monks' quarter that also includes a spacious stone courtyard. The setting for ritual lama dances that commemorate significant dates in the Tibetan Buddhist calendar. His Holiness the 16th Gwalpa Karmakpa Rangjung Ringpe Dorji, holder of the sacred treasure of Vajradhara, founded Rumtek Monastery Chakra Center in Sikkim as his main seat in exile outside Tibet. As the supreme head of the Kagyu order of Tibetan Buddhism, the Karmapa embodies, represents and guides accumulated spiritual energy. Karma means activity and Gyalva Karmapa embodies the activity of all the Buddhas of the Ten Direction. The Karma Karyugu lineage was established by the first Karmapa Dasum Khempya in the 12th century, prophesied by the Buddha Sakyamuni in the Samadhira Jasta Sutra. The accomplishments of Dusum Khepa are also great that he was declared to be the knower of three times. He established Surpu Monastery in central Tibet as seat of the Gyalva Karmapas in 1185. Each Karmapa incarnation possesses the unique ability to predict detailed circumstances of his next rebirth, usually revealed in a letter to be opened after his death. Dastum Khampa was the first Karmapa to predict the time and place of his rebirth, and his reincarnation Karma Pakshi was the first Tulku reincarnate Lema ever recognized in Tibet. When the Communist China began to occupy Tibet during 1950s, the Karmapa realized that he would have to leave the country to preserve the accumulated spiritual legacy of Karma Kari 
Kagyu. During the 1959 uprising, he left Surfu Monastery with a group of 150 Tulkus, Lamas, monks and lay followers, carrying spiritual treasures, relics and texts that has been collected at the Surfu for over 700 years. They made a long and difficult journey to India through Bhutan. On reaching the Indian border town of Buxadakthwar, the Karmapa received an invitation from His Majesty Chogyal Tashi Namgyal, the then King of Sikkim, to establish a new seat in that country. The Karmapa accepted, continuing a long religious spiritual relationship between the Gyalwa Karmapas and the Kingdom of Sikkim. The association of Kagyu lineage with the kings of Sikkim was centuries old. The fourth Sikkimese Chogyal asked the ninth Karmapa Wangchuk Dorji to build monasteries in Sikkim, long considered an exceptionally holy place by Tibetan Buddhists and now home to many ancient Kagyu monasteries. Three of these, Ralang, Fodong and Rumtek, were founded under the auspices of ninth Karmapa. It was the old Rumtek monastery then in disrepair where the 16th Karmapa stayed before establishing room Tech Dharma Chakra Center. Work on the new monastic complex began in 1961 and was completed in 1966. The Karmapa worked tirelessly from his international headquarters at room Tech Dharma Chakra Center to decimate the Dharma and undertook two world tours in 1970s to spread the teachings. On the crowning of the roof peak of the four-story temple is the golden sculpture, the Ganzia. Five distinct shapes comprise the two roof ornament, symbolizing the five Tathagata Buddha families. From bottom to top, the lotus symbolizes Amitabha, the wheel Vairochana, the bell Amogha Siddhi, the vase Aksyobhya and the jewel Ratna Sambhava. One floor below is the Rigdag Chokor. Legend holds that after Buddha attained enlightenment, he retired to an isolated place. While sitting there in meditation, he was approached by great gods Brahma holding a golden wheel with thousand spokes and Indra bearing a white right turning conch cell. They offered these objects requesting teachings on the holy dharma. Buddha said he would turn the wheel of the dharma in stages, three stages. Just then two deer emerged from nearby forest and gazed directly at the wheel. To commemorate the first turning of the wheel, a dharma wheel and a pair of deer, male and female, sit atop every Buddhist temple and monastery. The wheel symbolizes the Buddha's teaching and the deer representing Buddha and Indra students. The stance of deer is also significant. Their upturned faces symbolize listening, their attentive gaze reflection and their reclining posture meditation. Six metal golden Gyalsen victory banners symbolizing victory over negative forces of all directions complete the roof decoration. Inside the main prayer hall is a 10-foot Sakyamuni Buddha statue flanked by Shariputra, Mangalaputra and sits aloft the back of the hall. On either side of Rupa are 1,000 small Buddhist statues made of clay and painted gold, reminding us of the arrival of 1,000 Buddhas during this era. To the right and rear end of the main shrine hall are the Mahakala and Mahakali shrine rooms where puja is held every morning and evening. Mahakala is the special protector of Kagyu lineage and people visit the, the, his shrine to pay for the removal of obstacles in their lives. One side of the hall are the two Gongkhangs, protectors of chapels of Sheringche Naga, female protector and Kagyu lineage and Dorji Dorlo, the wrathful emanation of Guru Padma Sambha. Oh.
Himachal Pradesh, Tabo Monastery. Tabo is situated on the left bank of River Spiti. Flanked on either side by hills, it houses one of the most important Buddhist monasteries and is regarded as many as only next to the Tholing Gompa in Tibet. Tabo is the largest monastery complex of Spiti, which has since been declared a protected monument under the aegis of Archaeological Survey of India. At first glance, Tabo seems nothing more than a cluster of large mud huts, but inside a series of amazing galleries and stucco statues emerge. Tabo Monastery is adorned with a number of exquisite ancient murals, some of them dating back to the 11th century. Founded in 1996 AD, it is often called the Ajanta of the Himalayas, but photography inside the complex is banned. Therefore, one can purchase only a set of picture postcards to share the experience with others. In terms of area, this is the largest monastery complex in Spiti and the old section has 9 temples, 23 shortens, a monk chamber and a nun's chamber. There are several caves and contemporary structures that form part of the Tabo complex. In trans Himalayan Buddhism, Tabo's sanctity is only next to the Tibet's Tholong Monastery. It is declared as the World Heritage Site by UNESCO. His Holiness the Dalai Lama has expressed his desire to retire to Tabo, as he maintains that the Tabo Monastery is one of the holiest. The monastery was founded by the great scholar Rinchen Zhangpo in the year 1968. The entire complex of the monastery consists of nine structures, out of which the most popular one is Duang Lakhang. The huge Chaitya Hall boasts of magnificent architecture as well as a few splendid Buddhist sculptures. Apart from these, there are four-faced magnificent idol of Lord Buddha, the Amitabh Buddha in seated position, a stucco idol of Buddha, Stava, Maitreya, etc. The main shrine inside the monastery is that of Sung Lakhang and is maintained at the heart of the complex. Tabo Monastery also has a rich collection of clay statues of Buddha painted in Kashmiri style. There are nine temples within the complex. Is situated on the south side of Indus, approximately at a distance of 42 kilometers from Leh. The monastery is accessible by a motorable road. Traveling to Hamas Monastery itself is a rejuvenating experience. As just after crossing the Shea and Thiksi, one heads across the Sindhu River and takes the winding route towards Hamas, which is a memorable one. Crossing the river by a cantilever bridge, the road skirts up towards the village of Chusor. Then it passes over a green oasis in the middle of rugged mountains and high altitude desert plains lined with poplar and willow trees. As one nears the adjoining hills, the Hemis Gompa comes into view. Across the stillness of the wide expanse, Hemis Gompa stands upright, built in Tibetan style, jutting out of the mountain top. Hemis Monastery is the largest monastic institution in Ladakh. It belongs to the Drukpa lineage or the Dragon Order of Mahayana Buddhism and His Holiness the Gyalwang Drukpa is the supreme spiritual head. Hemis is the main seat of Kagyu lineage of Buddhism. There is an interesting fraud related with the history of Hemis Monastery. In 1894, a Russian journalist named Nicholas Notovich claimed that Hemis was the origin and otherwise unknown gospel, the life of Saint Isa, best of sons of man, in which Jesus is said to have travelled to India during his lost years. According to Notovich, the work has been preserved in the Hemis library and that it was shown to him by the monks there while he was recuperating from a broken leg. But once his story had been re-examined by historians, Notovich confessed to having fabricated the evidence. As per Wikipedia, in contradiction or to the claims made by Mr. Notovich, Bard D. Ehrman states, and I quote, Today, there is not a single recognized scholar on the planet who has any doubts about the matter. The entire story was invented by Notovich, who earned a good deal of money and a substantial amount of notoriety for his hoax. Unquote. As per the ancient texts, Gyalva Gospa Gongo Zorji, a main disciple of first Gyangwang Drukpa, 
Sangpa Gyare She Dorji and one of the most celebrated yogis of the Himalayas came to Ladakh in the 13th century and established the Drukpa lineage here. Druk in Tibetan means dragon and it also refers to the sound of thunder. In 1206, about 800 years ago, Sangpa Gyare Yeshe Dorji saw nine dragons fly to the sky from the ground of Namdruk and he named the lineage Drukpa or lineage of the dragons. After his auspicious event, Sangpa Gyare became the founder of the lineage and was known as first Gyalwang Drukpa. In his lifetime, uh, time, Sangpa Gyare unveiled many treasures of holy teachings and objects in southern Tibet and also discovered Sari, a very famous holy and powerful place in Tibet. Because of his spiritual attainments, Sangpa Gyare became popular as Druk Thamche Khyampa, the omniscient dragon, and reverentially referred and called as J. Drukpa, Lord Dragon Master. When Sangpa Gyara passed away in 1211 AD, on the cremation day, a rainbow canopy appeared and showers of flowers fell. Many could hear celestial music and smell a beautiful aroma in the atmosphere. When his body was cremated, his heart, tongue and eyes remained intact. His skull bone and images of Arya, Avalokiteshvara, Manjushri and Vajrapani the 21 joints of his backbone turned into 21 mini statues of Avalokiteshvara. Many of these relics are still available in various Drukpa monasteries for reverence and these are proofs of Sangpa Gyare's spiritual attainments. The lineage acquired the name Drukpa in the 12th century when assuming the human form. Avalokiteshvara, the lord of universal compassion, manifested in Tibet as the outstanding disciple of Mahasiddha Lingchen Repa. This sublime being was called Dragon Sangpagyare, the meaning being Dragon, the protector of being Sang, being born of land of Sang, Gya from the noble clan of Chinese Gya origin, Ri, a cotton clad yogi. The kingdom of Bhutan, considered as one of the few remaining Buddhist kingdoms in the world and a pure land of Himalayas, also takes the name Druk or Drukyul meaning the land of thunder dragons and its people are also known as Drukpas. As per the legend, it is said Gyalva Gotangsva meditated in the cave on the edge of the mountain over Hemis Monastery where a meditation center named after him was established. Hemis Monastery existed even before the 11th century. Naropa, the pupil of Yogi Tilopa, the teacher of translator Marpa, in con is connected with this monastery. Naropa is considered as the founding father of Kagyu lineage of Himalayan esoteric Buddhism and accordingly, Hemis monastery is considered as main seat of Kagyu lineage of Buddhism. The annual Hemis festival that takes place on the 10th and 11th day of 5th lunar calendar was introduced by Gyalse Rinpoche. From the time of Ragyalras Rinpoche, around the year 1730 AD, the Hemis festival has been observed year after year without break and has now become well known internationally. According to the Tibetan calendar, the great annual festivals held in the villages of Ladakh take place in the winter, with the exception of Shechu held in Hemis in summer. This is one of the most important events of the valley, its chief feature being the presentation of mask dance for two days at a stretch. The festival commemorates the birthday of Guru Padma Sambhava, the celebrated founder of the Lama tradition and presiding authority of Tibetan Buddhism. According to records in Sikkim, Padma Sambhava came northward and convinced the Lamas of Tibet that he was sent to Tibet as an incarnation of Buddha. The festival eulogizes the great deeds of Padma Sambhava and reiterates the victory over evil for the protection of Buddha Dharma. Guru Padma Sambhava is the founder of Tibetan tradition and the source of Terma tradition of Ningpa. He is popularly known as Rinpoche, the precious teacher. Nyingmas honor him next to Buddha and refer to him as the second Buddha. It is believed that Guru Padma Sambhava descended as a representative incarnate of all the Buddhas to bestow grace and improve the conditions of living. He does so on the 10th day of each month and 
all of the tenth days which come in a year or the most important of the tenth of the monkey year in the cycle where the thangka of the guru is exhibited the purpose of the sacred performance and the dances is to bestow good health subjugate disease and conquer evil spirits guru padma sambhava is regarded as one of the most extraordinary teachers in the history of buddhist sages a possessor of enlightened power he was a great esoteric practitioner and said to have been born in a lotus led an ascetic life and taught numerous followers about the esoteric approach to enlightenment and had the distinction of assuming different forms at different places the himesh festival takes place in the rectangular courtyard in front of main door of the monastery the space is wide and open save two raised square platforms 3 feet high with a sacred pole in the center the platforms mark out the center of the performance space in front of main door of the monastery the raised dais with the richly cushioned seat with finely painted small tibetan table is placed with ceremonial items cups full of holy water uncooked rice tormas made of dough and butter and incense sticks a number of musicians play the traditional music with four pairs of cymbals large pan drums small trumpets large side wind instruments next to them a small space is assigned for the lamas to sit The mass dance of Ladakh are referred collectively as Chams performance. Chams performance is essentially a part of tantric tradition performed only in those gompas which follow the tantric Vajrayana teachings and the monks perform tantric worship. The Chams are performed in strict adherence to the prescribed texts orally transmitted from generation to generation. Chams are performed with masks and costumes of various meditative and protective deities. Each monk assumes the personage and personality of the deity he is meant to characterize. They come out into the open courtyard and dance around the central pole with a slow and solemn movements of legs and hands to the special music of drums, cymbals and wind instruments. Tibetan ritual music played during Chams Kham performance contains variety of protean forms. Tibetans believe that the religious music has its origin in the teachings of Dakinis. Legends also hold that Lama named Takpo Dorje Chang transmitted the most complex and beautiful music the Yang all beings through Dakinis. Music is looked upon as a sacred offering to the deities. Orally beautiful, it enhances dance drama by sustaining and lending the whole performance an orderly rhythmic element. The music that is placed in the monasteries is often characterized in terms of the deity to whom the offerings are made. The musical offerings are often suited to express nature of the deity. The performance during the Hemis festival is to appease the eight aspects of Guru Padma Sambhava who appear in its eight forms in different colored masks namely Padma Vajra gold padma sambara blue golden mochong flesh colored padma gyalpo flesh colored nirmia odzar yellow saikya singe yellow singe dotox blue black and dorje tolod reddish brown 